Hey everybody. I designed a part so that I could attach a, or a couple parts so I could attach a quick change tool post to my watchmaker lathe um, cross slide. And I was making the drawings because I'm going to do the machining on Tuesday or Wednesday this week. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to go over how I like to send out drawing packages to make them easy to check and what I expect from my coworkers when they send me drawing check uh, drawing packages to check. Because um, I think it's common for people to sort of send out their package, it's their drawings, and they kick it over the fence to the checker and say, hey, can I have this by Thursday? And then the checker's just kind of left there going, okay, well, I gotta figure this thing out. Like, what does this thing do? You know, they hopefully they get the assembly as well, but not much other information. So they'll look at the drawing and they'll go over it. And then it'll, after a while, they'll go talk to the designer and probably chat about it. But there's just an easier way to do it, which is to make a design or well, a design package, I suppose, for the way that the part works and where all the tolerances came from. And in my packages, I'll typically have an explanation of the way the assembly interacts with the other parts. So, you know, this screw that I'll may be making custom interfaces with the top here, the T-nut interfaces with the cross slide, and then we don't want any interference on this inner diameter. And based on that, I'll tell them what the datums are, which hopefully makes sense based on the interactions, and then get into the numbers for the tolerances. So something that you'll see a little bit on my package here, and this is just for me, and it, the drawing's incomplete, so I'm not going to talk too much about the actual tolerance that was selected, but this note here I think is an important note and it's very powerful because there's a lot of times in a design where there's not a good logic behind the tolerance and you just have to pick something so that you can make the part. And making a note of that in this document is great because then in the future if there's a non-conformance or if there's some sort of issue with the function, the production engineers or you or some, some other engineer in your place will look at this and go, okay, well, why was this tolerance picked in the first place? And they'll see that there was not a great logic and something just had to be put on there. And they'll be able to update it based off of the new information. You know, if it's a, an assembly error or a non-conformance or whatever. Uh, something else that I've done on here is I will sometimes split the uh, geometric tolerance and the size tolerance on features into two different slides because sometimes you need one piece of information to get another to get the third piece of information. So in this case, I had to pick a geometric tolerance. You know, I guess I could have done it in whatever order, but I picked a geometric tolerance to start and then I calculated the allowable positional tolerances so that the there would be no interference with the bore. And then based off of that information, I can come up with the size tolerance. Um, I didn't put the actual math in here, but in, in a document that I'm making for work, I might have an appendix where all the math is done. And then the other thing is, again, here's that note. This could be changed because in just in intuition, I think 1.5 millimeters of wall thickness is enough but you know if this part snaps and it's because of the wall thickness well I will know that that size tolerance needs to come down or the positional tolerance needs to come down so again this could be changed could be changed could be changed if you know this is another thing if you've got sort of a fit that you're go trying to go for so I don't want there to be an interaction between the walls of this t-nut that I'm making and the cross slide I want it to be a very easy to slide back and forth just put that information on there say hey I'm going for a specific type of fit and it's not super important but I do want it to be free running and the final thing that I've got on this drawing package but along the same lines is I put a th uh, relief cut on the thread and there's a rule of thumb that says you want the relief cut to be uh, one and a half thread length, um, one and a half threads away from the face because that's about where the tap will stop cutting fully formed threads, and then slightly smaller than the minor diameter. So I put 
you know, this rule of thumb, a picture of it. I put the minor diameter that I have assumed up here. And that's where these tolerances came from. This is just going to make the checker of this drawing's life so much easier. So that's the ways that you can make their life easier and then your life easier if there's an issue in the future and you need to come back and figure out, you know, why did I pick the tolerance? Or if you're going to make a similar cut or a similar cut, a similar part, you can come and steal the tolerances and adjust the either the math or the rules like if i change this to an m5 let's say that made this thread an m5 that we don't need this big of a relief cut so it can be a little bit smaller and then so that's all great that'll make your checkers life easier but that doesn't necessarily ensure that they will do it quickly so if you want to make sure they'll do it quickly the best way is just to tip your checker um 20 25 percent of their salary that day to get it done quickly is always appreciated. I'd say 15% minimum, uh, anything less than that, and you're just going to insult them. So make your documents, good tips, and your drawings should be out on the floor getting cut into metal uh, real quick. Anyways, have a good one.